Let's check out your knowledge of Star Wars oh in my the God, orchestra we, here. We're starting off straight. Yeah, I reckon I've seen I've seen all of the originals. Obviously, episode one and two were like coming out as I was entering that like kind of teen era. Um, sexual awakening. Yeah, my sexual awakening. <laughs> Jaja Binks. Damn girl. Dem lips. They, dem ears. They did something. Nothing quite compares though in in terms of music in a movie. Like the June two was pretty good. The most recent one. Yep. I like Mad Max personally. You Mad know, Max, Max, unbelievable, Mad- incredible. So much practical shooting, beautifully shot. Um, Lion King, different. Type of touch, but you know, I do like straight. that old school world. Like music wise, I do like that old school world of like whenever there was like a movie coming out, then there was just a song that accompanied it, and it'd have its own music video. Sometimes the stars from the movie were in it from a different from a different kind of field. But the Guardians of the Galaxy soundtrack's always oh yeah, fire. well the, it's good when a, when they set themselves like a task and they have like a theme, and they're like, that's what we have to do is just create this kick ass. Is it di- disco? What does he do? No, no, I'm thinking of um, The Martian and it's all disco um, because he's being left up in space with just that that music from one of the other people. That Mm. is how it goes though. He does like a full soul playlist. I need need to get a quick little Google on. I saw an actor the other day. Uh, Yeah, you Google um, and I can talk about that. We just had Abby on the podcast from Keep Cup. What a podcast. Now, if you're looking, we may be, if you're watching YouTube, we're actually wearing different clothes. That's because it's a week later. So we're going to see how good our memory is from uh, remembering that great chat. But it was great. So I'm sure that we'll be able to pick up on a few of those. Um, Liam, do you want to give us a little intro on this number, the man behind the mic? It's the intro to the pod. You just you normally do the intro yeah. to the coffee break. You're right, you? you're right. Yeah. I'm trying to give you a moment in the sun. You kind of jumped and you're over. You, you jumped on it, you know. Mate, you got to be on the pulse. Welcome back to another coffee break with the boys from It's Just Coffee. It's, it's just, just, just Coffee. It's Just Coffee. We did just have Abigail come through and she was an absolute delight. Her and Kirk got on more than we expected from musical they taste to... They had so much in common. I hated it. The and, chemistry. Yeah, the oh, chemistry. chemistry. There and was some know, loving looks as well. It's it's her uh, equal love of Metallica and Star Wars that really, you know, I thought... And Lord of the Rings. And Lord of the Rings, yeah. Oh my God, I hate it My type of woman. By the way, it was Digimon Honsu that I saw. So he's he's the guy from Blood Diamonds. Oh yeah, I know that guy. I saw him walking by the other day. I was like, fuck, that's him. And then um, I was going to go up and be like, dude, I'd... what's up? <laughs> but I, I Ask didn't. him on the pod. <laughs> Oh, yeah, man. Right up. Oh, also, did you see all the comments when we did a, you may remember a few episodes ago or a little while ago, Joe Jonas walked past mm. just out here and we have a little clip of spotting him and him looking in. We posted that clip and everyone started commenting and tagging him who were Joe Jonas fans and they were like, he's an absolute coffee addict and obsessed with coffee. He would have absolutely loved oh. it. So even more so, just those moments in life where I'm like, when we were sitting there going, someone grab him, someone literally grab him. He would have done it. And he would have had some thoughts on coffee. Yeah, yeah you're right. Well, quite- this is a call out. Tag him now, Joe yeah, Jonas. Well, it'd be good to have him on. He's a good looking man. He's a good looking rooster. Yeah. And that's what we go by here. Just if they're, you know, beautiful specimens. And he it. says, no, well, I'll say Yeah. Oh, 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 oh trouble sorry, in paradise. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, but just quickly back to Abby. Uh, great guest. So cool. So, uh, is also having someone that's like the owner of their company. I love when she's like, well, for good and for bad, I answer to no one, maybe to the detriment of my pockets because, you know, we're just doing what we think is right and what the right moves are. So I thought that was amazing of it. Even when we asked the question about other reusable brands and how they're launching all these seasonal editions, different colors, um, how can you be pushing eco if you're encouraging people to just buy up different editions and all that kind of stuff? And I wanted to know her answer. And I think I just said, like, how do you walk that line of making profit, but, you know, still not pushing too many? And she was like, in an ideal world, we wouldn't exist. We'd be like shut down. In an ideal world, no one would be buying our cups, but there is a problem and we can kind of solve it half with our product. But ideally, just sit down and drink your coffee, is what she said. Mm. And it's like, I don't think you'd see many founders that would be saying that about their own product line. Yeah, no, it's uh, there's this term called consumer obsoletism. 
Um, so, you know, it's like an iPhone. It's designed to sort of only last a certain period of time so that you have to buy a new one. Yep. So, um, you know, hers seem to be durable and she's not really encouraging the constant purchase of a new one. Yeah, so. I mean, they actually on their channel, they promote people who um, – whose keep cups, let's say they've got like the one with the cork band and that's snapped. They promote the people who share photos of them, like people putting elastic bands around the cork to hold it together or or making sure that their keep cup keeps going the long distance so they don't have to buy a new one. And also they have on the website, I didn't know this, I just found it out. You can just buy a replacement like plug or cork band or whatever. So even if the cork snaps, you just chuck it on. Mm. Um, so yeah, I thought that was really cool of them. Um, I thought she was a good sport of when I sometimes things just come to you during a pod and I thought she was a good sport when I asked her if I could keep her ashes in a keep cup urn mm. that was their water bottle. Uh I was losing my mind back here when uh when that came up and it ended up uh just to uh go back to it, Rowan asked Abigail if it was okay if um we could use one of her keep cups that we had on the table as her urn and it does look like a beautiful urn yeah which she actually responded to actually i want to be planted in a life bag yeah underneath a tree that um, is so cool yeah uh, i'm gonna issue some spoiler alerts right here mm-hmm. so if you have not seen Fur- furiosa yet i'm about to issue a spoiler alert spoiler alert spoiler, spoiler alert. alert we don't have a spoiler button so we'll just pre- hit i'll just yeah do boy. one of these oh, okay yeah, boy. That okay. Spoiler. So the villain, Dementus, uh, when they don't kill him, they just kind of plant him as part of a tree. It looks like quite torturous, so he becomes a tree in it. That's kind oh, of Oh, wait, this is a spoiler for Furiosa. I was yeah. thinking just the regular Mad Max. I haven't seen it yet. I, I'm just like, Why? yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Me too. I haven't seen it either. <laughs> What's that? You're always spoiling the things. Okay, is that oh. movie any good? Because it looks... I, I enjoyed it, it. It looked like it was a spoof parody of the first one from the posters and that. It was I'm actually, not saying it was quite good. Okay. Was, I actually think it was Chris Hemsworth's best acting oh. performance. It's they styled him too much like Thor that I when I saw the trailers I'm like you just uh, look like a bad version when, of but Thor. But when you watch it like I kind of don't think it's him. You know, and he it's his best ever acting performance in terms of going into a character whereas Thor's like, I kind of feel like the accent's kind of lame. Yeah. Uh but this was you know, obviously Mad Max embraces Australianism yep. and uh, yeah, I actually thought it was his best performance. Yep. Well, I will have to go and see that and be upset with uh, knowing the ending. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Boiled. Well, <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah. So Abby, what are you saying? Abby was, wanted to be a tree. Abby wants to be a tree. Abby wants to be a tree. Yeah. Um, which was cool. I think that's cool that you can do that. I've also seen that you can get yourself turned into a diamond when you... You can have your ashes like pressed into a diamond. Right. This is this is a controversial statement, but I feel like, so we've got a great big graveyard not far from here, right? Right. Oh, the one at, by Princess Park? Yeah. Yep. Do we need graveyards anymore? I know. It's an interesting like, thing. I mean, I'm, I'm, pro- like, I'm sorry if I'm offending you or your family, but like that's prime real estate inside of a city. Uh, yeah, we could turn that into a garden, another botanical garden, but instead yeah. it's just like... But have it as people, have people trees, have the cemetery just be oh, a yeah. forest yeah. of get like a, literally a, yeah. thousands of trees rather than concrete blocks. Um, I just I just don't know the oh. place for a graveyard in a city anymore. I'm also, I don't have the connection to like the actual graveyard or that spot where I think some people go to it. It's like my dad died when I was like 16 or something and I just don't have that emotional connection to the plot or the place. Like, um, you know, you remember in other ways and have like those kind of moments. Like I was born on his birthday. So it's like every birthday we get to celebrate. There's the anniversary. There's all these things. But I'm not like emotionally invested in a piece of concrete. Mm, Yeah, I can feel that. That's actually an interesting point as well. Um, She said that she'd like to have Probably with her grandmother on the day, mm-hmm. if you recall. I thought that was quite a uh, an answer I wasn't really ready for. I know. Like, I was you're ready for some like silly, crazy thing, a celebrity, and then she's just like talks about um that's right. Yeah, he talks about the grandmother because I was like, I completely understand that because you feel like there's different stages in your life and how people would know you or like interact with you. And she was just like, I'd love to know her now and to have that conversation. And I guess I guess it's like Know her at this age as well, when we've both got a bit of wisdom, and you can kind of yep. speak to each other on the same level. Yeah, like that. That that was something I found quite interesting. That was so beautiful. I mm. love that. Um, what else? I oh, mean, I'm trying to read my scribbled writing here. I just had Star Wars down because you and her. Yeah, no, we, we we get along. Um, but the other thing that I thought was interesting, and I think we should 
we should talk about here and maybe elaborate a bit more on. I mean, as a cafe owner, you might have a point of view here, but the COVID change that it was before COVID, like you were glared at if you had a disposable cup. People would, it was so uncool to have a disposable cup. Um, but now, for whatever reason, it's just gone back to disposable cups everywhere. You were saying majority of your sales in the cafe are disposable cups. It is an interesting challenge of like, how do we get back to that to that space? I'm going to solve. I'm going to solve it right here. Solve it. I'm going to oh solve it right here, right this now. This is more of an, a rhetorical open question, but this, we have an answer. I feel like I'm g- giving a hot take, but in a coffee break. Yeah. So coffee break, hot take. Oh yeah. Um, all right. Those of you listening, get a nice, durable piece of tape or even a permanent marker, and write your name and your coffee order on your cup, and it will be delivered to you faster, and the bristles will make less mistakes, and it will make their job easier, so we can keep this thing rolling. Oh, so just have a cup with permanent marker, and you just write it on there. Yeah, just sometimes it's like hard keeping up with whose cup's who. Label your cups with your coffee order and your name. Please, it will make everything so much easier. That's a great design. I don't know if it's like not eco-friendly or not, but that's a great idea for Keep Cup just to have a thing that when you order the cup, you can have etched in name, coffee order, like whatever, and you just go up and it's like, you don't have to say anything. You just put it up on the counter. Stoke do it well. Oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, I know we just had Abigail on it from Keep Cup, but I'm just like, we're just, I'm, I'm just saying. I've, yep. I've seen it done on some of their cups. Yep. Um, I feel like personalizing items are becoming more and more available. Like all of Apple stuff, you can have like, you know, Mm. Um, this has come from the Edge Boy, but you can edge the back of um, the, 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 everything. The, the practical um, sort of result of this is just so. If if you, I would love to see a world where keep cups are used so much more frequently, and that's probably one of the biggest. And to be honest, it's like you're dancing a, a line of sort of stakeholders where you've got to get the person who uses it to be invested, so the person who drinks out of it, but also the barista to kind of make them perform better with it so that it's not as not such a you know conundrum for the customer. Yep. So how do you do that? Well, they want to have the keep cup, great. Make it easier for the barista too. It's like yep. incentivizing them as well. This oh. has their name, their coffee order. I can't screw it, screw it up. The idea that we had with Abby of the personal um, little water cleaner thing that's separate to the barista, mm. genius. Oh. Like the idea that you can go in and just clean it yourself and then go mm. up to the barista and order your coffee. Because like, I imagine being a barista, someone handing you some manky cup. You're like, get out of here. Yeah. Come mm. on. And we also talked about like the aesthetic design um, kind of leaning into celebrating having it for so long. Like, you know, having like certain seasons of keep cup. It's like people want to get rid of it so that they have the newest color, the newest this and that. But like, if we now think about design and like having it kind of age in a cool way, you know, like, like leather like shoes. Me. Yeah, exactly. Look at you. Look at you. I've aged in a cool way. Um, <laughs> but, it, oh, sorry. I was just going to say to that, do you think that I, I put it on COVID about the, the change in reusable and um, disposable? And I think that's true. How much do you think the whole red cycle scandal played into it? And I know we touched on it in the um in the pod but it broke a lot of belief between you know consumers and just the general public and these bigger kind of activations or eco activations that were happening can you give and, and for those who don't know can you give a little rundown of what happened with the red cycle yeah so this is probably more of an australian um sort of issue but red cycle is a soft plastic recycling program uh, where you could take your soft plastic so i don't know packaging for whatever purpose and then Put it in a uh, in a bin at your local coal supermarket, so one of the big chains here, and then they would sort of recycle it on your behalf. And so it was a bit of an initiative, but there wasn't much transparency within it. And then someone, uh, you can maybe tell that anecdote. Yeah, I can't remember whether it was War on Waste or something else, mm. but basically someone took like a geo tag, like a. Uh, no, air, tag. air tag or whatever, threw it in the recycling and then literally just followed it in a car following where the tracker went and it just l- drove hours and then drove into a dump and just threw all of the plastic into just a regular um, dump. Yeah, and so, and but the uh, program actually went bust, so it went broke and so there's just hordes of this soft plastic inside warehouses. So it's like, it's also like a fire risk. Yeah. And then the company went broke and didn't pay the people who were storing it and yada, 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 yada. Yeah. But, but 
I, I feel like that broke so much trust and kind of made everyone question, well, if they're lying, mm. what about all these other but companies? It's, it's, it's even hard to tell. Like I get told by sort of my pl- my plastic supply rep or my paper supply rep, oh, yeah, these coffee cups are biodegradable. And then you get someone say, someone else come and say, actually, the in, inner lining's plastic. It can't be recycled. Yeah. Uh, and oh, well, I said biodegradable, not compostable. It's actually a little different. You're yeah. like, well, wh- what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, so it's like really hard to see. Yeah, between the lines there. But I guess the best thing is to just use reusable cups. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Have a coffee dine in. Um, speaking of things that, you know, age well and, uh, you know, look great, a little birdie told me that you have a big birthday coming up this weekend. Oh, yeah, I do too. How old are you turking? Turking? Turning. Kirkovich is what I want to say. Turking. How old are you turning? I'm 30 years old. 30? 30. 30. Happy the big 30. 30. The, the big 30. Happy birthday. Are you doing a party? You talked about having a big party here in this location. Oh, yeah. I'm that deferring. obviously didn't happen. I'm deferring the party. You're deferring. Yeah, I'm I've, I've too busy this year to be doing that. Oh, look at that. You know it's going down here when you're like, I'm such an entrepreneur that I can't even have time for my 30th. Uh, well, honestly, I just, I couldn't, I didn't have the time to organize something and um, investing all my money and doing something else. And I want to have like a big old party. So well, come August next year. I am, I am sad that you're not celebrating, but I couldn't let the day go past. Oh, that's what that was. Without a little, what <laughs> that's what that box with balloons all over oh. it is. <laughs> without a little <laughs> gift for your 30th. For my beloved Kirk, for my co um, co host, I've loved doing this with you. Oh. We've got a little gift for you. Can I open it now? Yeah, please open it. Yeah, boy. So this is just a gift because well, they sat it on the table and I you, literally asked, "What's that?" But you're a gentleman, right? Business Kirk, you have yes. the the strong black. You're a gentleman, <sighs> and what gentleman? What every gentleman needs? Oh, is a Victoria bitter cologne. <laughs> Oh yeah. So for those for those that are listening abroad, Victoria Bitter is probably Australia's number one alcoholic beverage. Would you say? Dum 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 Long neck. Oh my god, no. It's, okay, well, I mean, <laughs> someone type in just in your own time. Look it up. There's Wait, some, but let's open this. Let's talk uh, to the fans. What's happening here? So we've got uh, we've got a big green box with a VB silhouette on it. It's called Thirst. It's called Thirst. Um, the long neck edition. Thirsty um, for me, guys. Now is this bottle? Get I hope it's for me. I hope it's just a long neck. So Kirk's opening it. I'm taking taking the plastic off, cracking the top off the box. I mean, they've done a good job with the packaging. It doesn't look bad. Um, Kirk's struggling like an idiot to open it. Um, all right, let's. Here we go. Oh, here we go. What do we? What do we got here? Pungent. <gasps> oh my god! Uh, it's yeah. a little like stubby with a gold crown top. Da-na-na. Do you want? Oh. yeah, sure. All right, let's get some of that on. Oh, there we go. Do I have to smell you now? I'm going to come on, across. On the old, uh, oh, on the wrist. I know what this is all about. You're always coming into work smelling like this. Because you're an alco. Oh, there you go. <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm um, joking. I mean, I'm pretty disappointed oh, thank, thank in the fact guys. that that doesn't smell anything like VB. Can I have a smell of the top? It's actually quite nice, isn't it? Yeah, it's, actually, it's just a, it smells like generic chemist warehouse cologne. Made with VB Super Pride Drop. Hops. Okay, it's so actually it's made, made with, with hops. hops. There you go. Yeah, um, it smells like something you may be finding like your grandparents' house or something. I've got a little recycle symbol on here. Is this recycle? Oh, there think? you go. We should recycle it. Um, well, thanks, guys. It's very thoughtful of you. Yeah, you're um, welcome. It'd be Kirth Day, you know. Is that going straight to the uh, straight to the mantelpiece? What are you doing with it? Straight to the pool room. Straight to the pool this room. This one's going straight to the pool room. Another piece of Australian vernacular that you can all get around. But I appreciate that. Thank yeah, happy you. birthday, baby. 30. Jeez, I'm not ready for 30. Got any tips for being 30? Are you 30? Sorry, I am, bud. Oh, wow. How, how old are you? 30 on the dot. Oh, a couple months ago. Big three zero. Tips for being 30. No, it's uh, it's all pretty much the same. Mm. It's all pretty much the same. Well, I got tips for you young folk entering your 20s. Yep. Uh, the difference between 20 and 30 on your body Stark, you know, you can't you can't go play a sport without warming up past twenty five. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're doing that. You do that. You're asking for trouble. Um, uh, yeah, 
Warm up, uh, warm up, do some weights. You, I mean, you still lose weight really quickly, but you're hitting your thirties. Maybe mm. that's because it's starting to come. Like losing yeah. weight yeah, slows it yeah, down. It gets gets a bit harder. Coke's been coming in with the uh, the hot roasts of our uh, fitness. Coke's now thirty. Comes in, yeah. Just, just, just put on stacks a, it on. Yeah, yeah just lay it on. Ten kgs are heavy. Oh, Kev in the house. I've got I've got bursitis, supraspinatus, and tendonitis in my left shoulder. It's you know that's thirty for you. Yep. So get better shoulder. <laughs> Um, now, my next two things that I have written down here just say head and then headphones, which I don't know what that means. So, I wrote some notes you wrote down that I wasn't really uh, going on. But while we're here and we're having fun and it's your birthday coming up, I thought we'd turn the tables and in the coffee break, we'd do a little rapid fire questions oh. of yours truly of Kirk. I'm excited for this. Are you, do you reckon you can handle it? What we got here? Well, I've been waiting for someone to rapid fire question me. I'm like, damn, right. these guys get the cue on Well. Right? Well, like we run in the uh, the main apps. Here we go. Hey, it's just questions. Ready? Oh yeah, let's do it to him. And your time starts now. Why do you hate long blacks? I don't anymore. Strong blacks better. Okay. What does your girlfriend find most annoying about you? My farting. What do you find most annoying about her? Yapping. <laughs> we heard she's a yapper. What is your most embarrassing childhood memory? I once pooped in a bush and blamed it on someone else. <laughs> Worst coffee order you've had? Um, it was a long black. Favorite Pokemon? Um, Tyranitar. Best breakfast in Australia? Oh, smash avocado. What do you like most about me? Nothing. What do you hate most about me? Everything. Do you pee in the shower? Yes. Have you ever pooped your pants? The answer is yes from before. Who should have won the 2024 World Brewster Championships? The Rifle Man won. Were you born a dick or did you learn it? Both. <laughs> and so oh, fuck up. <laughs> have you ever thought about me as more than a friend? Yes. <sighs> that is the perfect, That's beautiful the moment. That's the moment. For, for thinking about me everyone, as more than a friend. Everyone soils themselves and, you know, you, you've got at least one or two past 20. But wait, how old were you? How many? Okay, oh, so, so this so young, I, was in, I was in primary school, so elementary school for those in the uh, US. But yeah. uh, what happened was, I was young. I needed to go. I took a dump in a bush. Then this is at school. Well, then someone else oh, came at to school, school, like at recess. Yeah. Oh and my so, god. As you can understand, th- this is a recess crisis. Yeah. You know, because um, anyway, there's no toilets at a school. Yeah. And then oh, I just needed to go then, and I was like, oh. Damn. Uh, anyway, so I needed to go and then everyone was like, who did the poo? Everyone did the poo. And I kind of, um, I just kind of said. Poo scandal. I said, it was Adam Elliott. <laughs> and Adam, I'm He's sorry right. if you're listening. Um, you know, I threw him under the bus. This is the first time I've spoken publicly about oh it. Oh my God, here it is, <laughs> live uh, on a podcast. Yeah, so For everyone to know, well, uh, you know, that's there's probably like years of bullying under his belt. Like it's probably- 20, dis- 26 years later, 25 years later. It finally comes out. I can just imagine him sitting at home just like- listening to this podcast like oh my god <laughs> i told you all yeah so, uh, i do you want to hear another story i do i mean i've got a funny poo story now that you bring it up as well but you go again Mine's first. A vomit story so okay, I'm sorry it. for everyone wow this pod content just, warning for everyone yeah. so i went home to new south wales uh last year and um visited my family got a bit had a few too many to drink on one mm-hmm. night but the scandal really broke the next morning because what happened was i went for a um and went and I actually drove to a friend's cafe um, and then I got a toasted sandwich and a blue Powerade. Mm-hmm. And so I had the blue Powerade. I was all good, feeling great. But then I just I didn't have the appetite to eat the sandwich once I got it. Anyway, so I started driving home and I called my girlfriend and I was saying, no, I don't really feel like the sandwich. She said, do it. Take a bite of the sandwich. You'll feel much better. So, yeah, it was. So I took a few bites of the sandwich and I thought, oh my goodness, I don't feel too good. Um, and then I was saying to her, you know, I don't feel great after taking a bite of that sandwich. She said, you're just being soft. I realized I'm going to vomit. Okay. And I'm driving at this point. I said, oh, just, sorry, sweetheart. I'm, um, <laughs> I'm going to pull over and I'm going to vomit. She goes, sorry, baby doll. I and just, she uh, goes, no. That gentleman's intermission. She, she said, No. No, you won't. You won't. Just, just last year you get home. I was like, oh, I don't think it's that type of occasion there, my friend. And um, she said, no, just keep going. Just keep going. You'll be fine. Just think it out. Anyway, 
about five seconds later, I've got my hand on my face and it comes out and it's spitting between the fingers oh like it's bouncing. Oh, my God. Projectile. And, and it's blue from the power rain. <laughs> and it's just everywhere. This is driving and I still had 10 minutes to go home. It would look like an alien got like shot in your car, just like blue slime just sprayed across the front dash. And it was it was the worst car ride home because the smell of it was just awful. Uh, you did, you just, did you stop and clean it up or you just kept going? Well, I went all the way home. Just powered through. <laughs> and oh, then, my God. So, oh, my God. What is wrong with you? <laughs> well, I mean. <laughs> I was and your partner say. just sat there. Well, I was on the phone to her. She was back here. Oh, in Melbourne. I thought she was in the car with you. Sorry, I wasn't listening to that properly. Yeah, I don't know why I listened to her, but yeah, that's. <laughs> I've had a similar situation, but it was uh, after a night out of um, multiple jelly shots and a bit of Midori and yeah. a few other things, and I, I, I saw the rainbow. I sounds, tasted the rainbow. Sounds a bit hey going. But anyway, yeah, uh, the poo story. Do we want another poo story? Do we need uh, a, yeah. this content? Is oh, uh, one more. we're on one, one more. more? Okay, we were on a uh, we were on a school camp once. We must have been about what ten years old, and we were staying in like a group tent of like six people. Woke up in the middle of the night to this kid being like pushing me, like Rowan, Rowan. Oh my god, I need a poo and I can't find my glasses. Rowan, help. I'm like, just go uh, without your glasses. Like the toilet's just out there. Like you'll find it. Just go. And he's like, uh, uh, and he runs out and. He comes back and I don't hear any more of it. I'm asleep again. It's gone. The next morning, my other friend walks into the tent and just goes, oh, a kangaroo must have shat in the toilet and I stood in it. And he's coming into the tent like barefoot with poop on his foot. And then we're like, oh, this is horrible. And I'm like connecting some dots in my head. Like this kid's made it into the toilet, can't see without his glasses, and has just pooped on the concrete floor in crisis. the bathroom. Full blood crisis. But it doesn't end there. We're then uh. later playing four square and the ball gets hit far away into the bushes and someone goes into the bushes and just holds up this pair of underwear and it's got full of poo and they're like, ah, oh. and this poor kid, I'm not naming names here, he had his name sewn into oh, the underwear no. from his parents. Oh. And so they're calling out the name going, God, oh. his underwear with the poo in it. I man. Horrific. I guess their name sewn in their underwear. Anyway, we came up with the great nickname for him, Poo Pants. Um, wow. Yeah. Was, did, he, did he wear that one for life? <laughs> oh, yeah. It was sewn onto him. <laughs> oh, no. It is. So yeah. on to him. It's an original one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, looking back at being a kid, you're like, oh, we're horrible. We're, uh, if you're out there and you're listening to this story, I love you. Miss, these things happen. Thanks for being vulnerable. Um, yeah. Anyway, coffee stuff? Um, <laughs> coffee, <laughs> coffee, <laughs> coffee, <laughs> other things that make you poo. Yeah. Coffee, coffee makes you poo. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, no, I think that probably kind of brings us to the, to the end of this week. We did a great review of Abby being there. For those that don't know, the reason we've changed clothes is because one of our guests... Just cancelled on us last minute. They did. We were set up, ready to roll, and we were like, we'll just get our uh, little coffee break for Abby. But if you're listening and you're out there, you know who you are. And for the guests, uh, for the audience, you can probably figure it out because they'll probably be on next week. They'll, they'll, um, I reckon, I reckon what happened. Yep. He forgot. Yep. So they forgot. (laughs) <laughs> and, and, uh, and I thought you were being politically correct there, but you were just trying to like, cover yourself. Yeah. Um, they forgot, and then I was like, "Oh shit, better." Run. Yeah, that's okay. Um, I, oh, that happens. Yeah, I was just joking. We, we got plenty of stuff. Yeah, but, totally yeah. fine. I they, don't they, even they, mind. I don't even mind at all. I don't even go, mind. They can go fuck themselves, but that's that's, 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 that's fine. That's fine. So we still want them on. <laughs> yeah. Do we? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Of course. I mean, of course. as Liam yeah, says, yeah, as Liam says, it's that. It's fine. So that was a great app. If you have any questions, if you have any of your hot takes that you want to send in to us, yeah, email make sure to email them in. Send a video, send it written. We can read it out. Make sure to email us at hello at itsjustcoffeepotted.com. We've been getting some great emails in, which has been nice to hear from some of you. We want to keep getting those, bringing it up. A um, few people requesting to be on the pod. What no one is doing is telling me the secret spots that I should be going to get breakfast because I'm making it my mission that each weekend I want to go somewhere good, somewhere that I haven't been before. I don't want all the basics. I don't want all the main ones that we've heard before. But hit me with the like, you know what's really good? This place. I want some of that. We'll come down. We'll have some breakfast. All right. Can I give you a hot tip for this weekend? Ooh, give me the hot tip. Uh, oh, geez, now I feel like I'm on the spot with a hot tip. <laughs> I thought you had one the way you came I know, in. Yeah, I thought you, you came in loaded, really. Go to uh, go to Code Black in Brunswick. 
Yeah, but okay. I, oh, yeah. you want a small? We'll go a small. I just joint? mean like, yeah. For me, Code Black is like a Lab- Labajo in North Melbourne. There you go. That's we want hidden that. gems. Labajo in North Melbourne. That Labajo. is Labajo. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to look. Them. Okay, Labajo. I'll get on that. That sounds good. Oh. Um, any other words from you guys before we sign off? Um, well, yeah. Thank you for the birthday gift. Yeah. Really happy birthday. It. Happy thank birthday, you. Kirky. Cheers. Cheers, mate. Um, yeah, that's good. Thank you for. Hey, I'm going to celebrate with a spice mix curry. Oh, uh, that's um, how you do it. And I, uh, yeah, i will really looking forward to. Ha- oh, nice. We gotta, we gotta have like a, a, you know, we'll invite one listener, lucky listener, to a free pod, uh, free dinner at Spice Mix with us one time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, that's a good idea. Just so that we could actually verify. Hey, this place is awesome. Maybe if we start a Patreon, that can be like our top tier. It's like if you spend fifty dollars a month on the Patreon. We will take you out to a free dinner at Spice Mix. All right. Well, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Coffee Break. Hit us on the socials. Send us an email. We'd love to hear from you. And as always, it's it's just just coffee. coffee.